Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are uh, just jumping on right now and you missed the first little bit where I just pulled off a fabulous European accent. You missed it. You might want to go. Actually, you won't even hear it. If you weren't on the live, you're not even going to hear it. It might slide in here and there uh, tonight because sometimes, sometimes there are days where I swear it's the ancestors moving through me. And today might be one of them, sex being used as a weapon against you. Has that ever happened to you? For those of you listening, we, we usually talk about a lot of things pleasure-oriented on this show. And in the last little while, I've been talking about things that might actually be preventing you from having pleasure. Things like trauma, things like mindset. We've been talking a lot about uh, different things on this here fabulous pleasure zone. After eight years and eight months of being on, I am looking at different topics and ones that I know are key in order for us to all be at a place where we can be happy to actually be receiving pleasure and that we're not using things like sex as a weapon against our lover, lovers, lovers, however many you have. Congratulations if you have more than one. So has sex been used as a weapon against you? I'm telling you guys, this is a very strange and interesting topic because the first thought that came up when I when I came up with this title was everybody's going to think this is going to be about rape. And uh, I don't know if the algorithms will even let me say that, but the the truth of the matter is is this works in very many different ways to have sex being used as a weapon against you. Yes, so violence against your body is a whole other category uh, that you know that we're talking about, and what we will be talking a lot about today is the kind of the the mind screwery. Screw, I'll use screwery instead of the great F one, so this can go across many more platforms. So, mind screwery. If your mind has been screwed and torqued in different directions, and you're wondering why do I feel so messed up about sex. I just want you to look back in your life and actually check in and see if you've ever had sex used against you as a weapon and maybe you've used sex as a, a weapon too. Hmm. Sex as a weapon, what if even withholding sex could be a form of defense, which could be a form of warfare or weaponry. So using sex or no sex as a weapon either against you or that you've used against somebody else. I know personally that I have absolutely used sex as a weapon, I suppose you could say. Uh, used it as a way to uh, get what I required. I guess you could say like um, prior to my husband, I was in a relationship with someone and I really wasn't, I really wasn't interested in having sex with the person so in order to um, I don't know it was a very strange situation it was more for survival so I actually uh, would on occasion have interaction and it was uh, solely for survival sake because the person would get very very angry and use things like sex as a weapon against me and then in return, I would use sex as a weapon against them. So uh, yes, so sex being used as a manipulation can be also a bit of a weapon and depending on how you're using it. So 
I think all of us in some way have probably done this at some point. If you've ever had sex, then the chances are you may have used sex as a weapon against you and, or, or you've, you've used sex as a weapon against somebody. And if you've never had sex, you might be using or withholding sex uh, as a way to manipulate your partner. Some people genuinely are not interested in sex. That's completely different. However, when you are somebody who could be interested and you know that if you are going to either withhold it or use it as a negotiating tool, sometimes people use sex as a negotiation tool as well. If you're using it as a negotiation tool, that is not necessarily kind. Let's just, if, if you are negotiating for everything in your relationship, the chances are there is a real lack of foundation, of trust, of communication, of kindness, of several things. So if you're using sex as a negotiating tool, like if you, if I let you have sex with me, then you have to do A, B, C, and D. Well, if that's what's going on in your life, then just check out what's going on in the rest of the areas of your relationship. Do you have a strong foundation? Do you actually trust your partner? Do you enjoy their company? Do you enjoy them? Because my question to you is, would you need to do these negotiating tactics if you felt secure in your relationship, if you felt like you loved your partner, um, if, if your partner was kind to you, if you're kind to your partner, if if some fundamental things are in place, would you actually need to manipulate or negotiate your way through sex with your partner? Hmm. So my guess is that the, in, the energy on this is so heavy and fascinating as it just gets like really, really deep. And so many people out there that are like tapping into everybody who have done this sex as a weapon are like really not interested in letting people know that, that yeah, I use sex as a weapon. I got some pretty honest friends coming on in the chat room who are totally admitting to it, but um, I love that. And there, I know there's a lot of people up there who would, would probably never want to admit that they are doing this um, like negotiating and manipulating with sex in order to get what they want. And why is that? So what has you do that? Are you actually able to communicate with your lover what you desire? Or do you feel you have to manipulate them with sex or no sex? Do you feel like that is the only way that you get what you would like in the relationship? If it is, it is a really good time to seek out a relationship coach, uh, counseling, couples counseling, uh, sex and intimacy coach. You know, there's really great reasons why you might seek out a coach for this circumstance because there's something lacking in the relationship. There's something fundamentally lacking that you feel you need to use sex as a negotiating tool or a weapon or a manipulation. And I just want to let you know that, you know, if you're in a partnership that isn't working for you, and this is, you know, the way that the only way you think you can get what you want, I want to let you know that it's actually not true. There are many ways to communicate with your lover to, and if, speaking doesn't work for you there are other ways to negotiate there are things you can write there are things you can show uh you know communication isn't just words so finding ways to communicate effectively with your partner so that they can be on the same page with you when it comes to uh when it comes to sex so sometimes sex as a weapon also is used as a like the withholding of sex in order to also be able to negotiate later for what you want or desire. So if you, if you feel like you need to play these games in your partnership, it's a really good time to sit down 
and do some evaluations of what's going on. I bet there are some really deep old things going on in your relationship that would have you feel like you you can't say what you desire to your partner you can't ask for what you like maybe you don't feel like you have a voice maybe you feel like you're never heard anyway even when you do speak up and maybe you feel like you're misunderstood or that in your whole life the only way that you've ever gotten what you truly like desire or would or that are that you're choosing or asking for the only way to get that is through manipulation or some kind of tactics that are on par with war tactics so on par with war tactics what are some war tactics well you can confront your enemy you can surround your enemy you can out manipulate your enemy there's lots of different war tactics and i'm sure that you can see how any of these can be applied to relationship and any of these can be applied to sex as well. So when uh, we have a few comments in the chat room here. Uh, so yeah, so for some in the chat room, it was actually a tactic that they used when they were younger. It was something that, especially if you know that you're if you know that somebody wants sex from you and you know you can negotiate your way through it, you could be upfront about it, right? But generally speaking, when we're younger, we're not that good at communicating. We just, we don't have the skill set. So as we grow older, hopefully we develop that, but sometimes we don't. So if we are in relationships where you know, when, when you're younger, where you are manipulating, you're thinking, oh yeah, that person wants A, B, C, and D from me. Well, I'm going to get A, B, C, and D out of them first. So it could be like, well, I really need a vacation. So if they buy me a vacation, I'll have sex with them. And it's, can you see how there isn't necessarily love going on there? It, this is, this is business tactics. This is war and business tactics as most people who have ever run a, an effective business has, have also read the art of war and applied those to business. Uh, so, you know, very similar tactics. And I'm just wondering if you actually enjoy that. Do you enjoy using sex as a negotiating tool? Do you enjoy using sex as a weapon? as a manipulation, as something you can dangle over your partner or your lover's head. Well, if you do this, then you get this trait. Uh, so if your love, the thing is, then this gets really sticky because if your love language is touch and, and if it's primarily um, like your dialect is sex, then having that dangled over you will certainly have you not feel loved. It's going to feel like you have to earn love. So after a while, when somebody feels like they have to earn love repeatedly over and over and over again, they will probably leave, you know, or on some level, they might really enjoy the whole dynamic that they might really enjoy the power dynamic. That's more like, you know, one person's the more dominant um, lover. So as long as you're, if you are playing with dominance, as long as there's consensual things, everything is consensual, that's totally fine. When it comes to manipulation that isn't consensual, that's when abuse starts to get more and more prevalent. So I think what we need to do is look at what would have anybody think that they need to use sex as a weapon and how far back does it go? What are some of the key factors maybe in personality traits, in things that have gone on in your lives, um, that sort of stuff. So today's show is brought to you by my brain and absolutely zero research. So everything you're hearing tonight is all me. Uh, so nothing in this will you find necessarily quotes or you will find, you'll find quotes because they're creating quotes for me for the show, but uh, you're not necessarily going to find any reference material specifically 
directed at this topic. It's more of a power dynamic that came across my way recently that I wanted to look at. So how do we, how do we negotiate these things in relationships, especially if there's been some long-term abuses that maybe are unconscious that we haven't been aware that there's been the abuse there. So we'll look at that. So for everybody listening, you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are having a conversation about has sex been used as a weapon against you? The reason why I brought this uh, topic to mind is because there, I've been seeing sort of a, I've actually been seeing some things around and it's been making me wonder, like how many people use sex as a manipulation, whether it's through their body language or through their unspoken promises. People will often talk about these like unspoken promises. I've been told that I put out an energy that gives like unspoken promises because part of having this show has people have the impression that I'll have sex with anyone. And that's really far from the truth. Um, Can bodies turn me on? Yes, but actually minds turn me on the most. The smarter you are, the sexy you are, and like the crazier information you deliver to me, the more turned on I get. That's part of being sapiosexual. So when I geek out, it's like, I ah, might as well have an orgasm right then. You want to talk sci-fi and other crazy crap, then I get excited. <laughs> so, so there was a really uh, cool question in the chat room. And the question was, don't people of all ages use sexual energy to get what they want? No. So do people use sexual energy to get what they desire? I'll I'll word it that way. So do they, in a way they do of all ages. However, as a baby, you're not uh, anticipating, understanding, or anything to that matter, what it means to have sex. Your body may have arousal, just like, you know, baby bodies, uh, like little baby bodies with penises will sometimes get like baby erections. That doesn't mean the child is, has a desire for sex. It doesn't mean the child has pleasure related to this. It's a response of the body, you know, it could be the diaper was just um, rubbing the penis a certain way. So it created arousal. So it can appear like there's babies having 
uh, sexual energy. And yes, sometimes they can feel that and they will respond to the arousal of their body by touching themselves. Again, they're not putting two and two together going, this is sex. I'm going to use this as a manipulation tool. So that, that's not so much it. But um, the other part of the question was, is it like a child using their big baby blue eyes? So sort of, I can see how that could be um, seen that way. So what happens with humans as we're developing is we have this response that goes on in our bodies. So if I smile at you, you smile back at me. There's something in our brains called mirror neurons and those mirror neurons pick up the response. And the more you like, the more active your mirror neurons are, the more empathic you tend to be. I believe that's the, I believe there's some like correlation there. So there is, there is actually, there are actually studies done on, on mirror neurons and what they do for us. And when babies see somebody smile and they respond with a smile, their mirror neurons are active. They are somebody who can have empathy. If a baby doesn't respond, then their mirror neurons may not be active. So it's so just a different response in the brain to learning. So are they manipulating? No, they're actually learning. And we think they're flirting, but they're learning. So you crack a smile, they crack a smile. Or, and then they learn later on that they crack a smile, you'll crack a smile. It's all part of learning. And then we do learn also how to manipulate. We learn how to, to negotiate. We learn how to do all of those things. Babies aren't necessarily aware that they're manipulating. They're more like, um, it's more like trial and error. Like for them, it's, uh, if I cry, will I get a response? If I do this, well, you know, it's, it's not that they're, they're consciously figuring out, will I get a response? It's like, I cry, then I get my bottle. I cry, I get a hug. Whoa, this crying thing works. I'll do that. You know, so we learn, it's just a learned behavior that will get a response from a certain action or reaction that we have. So when, uh, when we do have those things grow, like as we're growing, then we have, we have a, we have a different way of doing that. So when we do look back at when did this sort of start? When did we realize that we could use sex as a manipulation tool? For some people, it happened very young, unfortunately. They had that awareness because there may have been sexual abuse, sexual assault. I mean, it's assault always, for especially for a child. So there's, you know, uh, molestation and all those sort of crazy things that would give a very different impression to a child than a child who's not molested about what sex can be used for. If you, for example, there are a lot of people who um, have been molested who will have the molester say, if you, you know, just let me do what I'm, don't tell anybody what I'm doing. I'll give you a toy after, I'll give you candy, blah, blah, blah. A lot of manipulation um, and sexual assault on children often leads to them getting treats or toys. There was a really uh, interesting uh, expose on this um, cult, you could say, in England, where, a, where there was a child uh, in a school, and this was several years ago, this was pre-COVID, and this child was interviewed. And she just matter of factly talked about everything that was going on in her school behind closed doors and how some kids got the candies and some, some kids did the sex and got candies and some kids didn't do the sex so they didn't get the candies. Um, there was also blood rituals going on in that place. So that one has been well documented. I'm not going to name it on here so that we don't get any of this pulled. But if you do want information on where and what that place was, I can get you um, can get you information on that. So in that in those cases, those kids were uh, being human trafficked in a school. There were parents involved in this, not all the parents, but some of the parents were involved in this, and it happened on a daily basis. And the kids would be given candy to actually then the other children who weren't getting the candy would go, well, I wanna go get the sex to have the candy. So they were grooming them to 
be not only okay with it, but ask for it. I have a lot of swear words that could follow that one, which I will not say on here, but you can imagine I can get creative. Those every effing sound that could come out of my mouth follows with that one. So they, yeah, that's sex as warfare for sure. How you use it to get what you want by saying, well, if you do this, you can get this treat. Now, this happens all the time. We, we know that it's sick and demented when it happens to kids and we know there's no consent. Now, when this happens in adults, we somehow think that it's acceptable behavior. It's not. It is still uh, manipulation and there's no, there's no kindness, there's no love. And there's usually the consent is based on coercion. So if you're being coerced, is that really consent? No. We know all about coercion for the last few years. There's been crap loads of coercion going on. Um, so when there's when there is coercion, there is actually no consent. So if you are being coerced in your relationship to have sex, that is using sex as a weapon against you and being told that you need to do this to be a good husband, a good wife, a good this, a good that. No, that's all somebody's great manipulation so that they can make you feel like shit so that you can you know then realize that there's you know probably start to think there's something wrong with you so you go into that tailspin there are though in relationship um, sometimes when we have like a lack of communication going on and we don't know how to word things sometimes the negotiation comes out out of desperation it's like please, can we have sex? I'll give you anything. Like I just, I just require this to feel loved. So that isn't necessarily, that isn't necessarily um, a conscious thing. It's just out of a place of feeling sort of a, a deep sense of desperation and desire to feel loved, especially if your love language is touch. And especially if that uh, your dialect of your love language is sex so and that kind of depth of of touch so not everybody requires that for their love language of touch but some people do so there is a question in the chat room is sex not used as a manipulation in most relationships as either a gratitude or withholding as a punishment so the answer is no it's not but there uh, there is a tendency uh, that that does happen in relationship because we lack communication. So when we can actually communicate with each other, um, you can, you know, I, I am grateful for sex when I have sex with my husband and I'll say, thank you so much. That's not out of manipulation. That's truly like from my heart, thank you. I, my body appreciates it. My being appreciates it. I'm grateful for this. It's a, like a healing for me. So yeah, there's a gratitude, you know, gifting somebody sex out of gratitude, gratitude and manipulation can't, they don't go hand in hand. So gratitude is gratitude. And then manipulation and withholding and, and punishment are a totally different side of things. So having sex with somebody because you're grateful for them actually adds to the love. Having it out of manipulation can create stickiness and kind of a mess. So if you're looking to create a little bit more chaos, then you'd want to withhold or punish, you know, your partner by saying, well, you didn't give me what I want, so I'm not going to give you what you want. And can you see how that, that's that whole concept of an eye for an eye makes the whole world go blind. Same with, you know, no sex for no sex equals a sexless society. I just made that up, by the way, you guys are welcome. But if I'm punishing you with no sex, and then when I desire it, you punish me with no sex, then how on earth are we, for one, there's no communication, total lack of communication going on. There's a lot of assumption and presumption with no question. So the key is to go to question, what is this? What can I do with this? Can I change it? What can I do to change it? I also really love the four questions of Byron Katie, is it true? How do I know for certain it's true? Without this thought, who would I be? And can I, you know, and the 180 degree turnaround. So in sex as a manipulation, if you're doing withholding and you go and your partner's withholding sex from you and you're like, that must mean they hate me. And then you just go to, wait a second, stop. 
I just went down my rabbit hole of abandonment and sadness and all this other stuff. Is it true that my partner hates me? Well, you, you could say, yeah, for sure it is. I have proof. Cool. How do you know for certain that it's true? Well, the proof is they didn't give me sex on A, B, C, and D date. And they didn't do this, this, and this, and this. And that means they would love me because those are my love languages and they didn't give me love. Okay, so for sure my partner hates me. All right, I know that for certain. But without that thought, who would I be and how would I feel? But if I didn't think that my partner hated me, I might actually be more at peace. I might feel more calm. I might be able to see a bigger picture. Huh, so if I turn it around, what could I actually see? If I turn that around and instead of my partner hates me, is maybe my partner just wasn't choosing in that moment to be with me. Maybe there's some part of me that hates myself. And that's part of a understanding that everybody, whatever we see in other people, we actually are in ourselves, which includes happiness. You know, so if you see joy in somebody else, you are that joy as well. If you see anger and resentment in somebody else, you are that anger and resentment as well. It comes down to self-evaluation and stopping and kind of paying attention to that. So, yeah, we're going to head to our next break. You guys can sit there and stew about that, about manipulation and sex and punishment and how we use that. And what if we didn't have to do that? And what if we could communicate better so that we can have more functional relationships? Who knew that's where this was going to go? I did. <laughs> so for those of you listening out there in listening land, this is the Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back in a moment. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist, Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we're talking about, have you ever had sex used as a weapon against you and i bet many many people have i bet most of the listeners have had sex used as a weapon against them or use sex as a weapon against somebody else part of that is why because we know sex is potent let's start with that 
if we know sex is potent, we know a few things about sex. Let's keep it really simple. We know sex is potent because why sex can create orgasms, orgasms are life-giving energy. We can create life with, as long as one person, the male body has had an orgasm, life can happen, right? So that's the, I wouldn't say, oh, sorry, the male, I don't want to uh, misgender people. So body with, you know, penises and testicles can, uh, you know, as long as that body has had an orgasm and gets implanted into the body with a uterus, guess what? Somehow, whether it's in vitro or the standard way, then the chances are you can create life. It's powerful. So sex is powerful. We know that. We know that sex is so powerful that sex has been used as a weapon for centuries, millennia. Sex has been used as you know, you hear about raping and pillaging. Well, they know that having sex with somebody is a violation to some of the most. Uh, having sex with somebody against their will, rape, is one of the biggest violations you can do to the human body. There's uh, research out by trauma researchers who talk about one of the, the biggest traumas that can occur to a body is sexual traumas. And we, we can have them in really obvious ways and we can have them in very subtle ways. And some of the more subtle ways is when sex has been used as a weapon against you and you don't even realize that it's been happening to you because maybe in your life, this is how sex has been. Maybe sex has always been the thing you've had to negotiate for or that your partner is like, oh, please just get it over with. I'm so, ugh, this is so not fun. And they're not present and they don't actually want to be with you. And they make you feel like a pile of crap for even being alive. That would be using sex as a weapon against you. So if somebody held a gun to your head, how would you react? If somebody held a gun to your head more than once, would you stick around? If somebody is using sex as a weapon against you more than once, more than five times, I'm thinking it might be a really good time to look at that and see what is it that has you need to do this if you're the one using it as a weapon. What is it that you feel that the only way you can be empowered is to use it as a weapon against your partner? Do you even like your partner? Let's start with that. Do you even like your partner? Do you enjoy sex with your partner? And that doesn't have to mean penetration. Do you trust yourself? Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone Radio Show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. Hi. 
How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. So tonight we're talking about, have you been using sex as a weapon? Hmm. Either again, have you used it against yourself? Has it, have you used it against others? Have you had it used against you? Chances are pretty high. One of us has done that for sure. So what I know is that when you use sex as a weapon, there's probably a reason for it. So if you weren't, if you didn't catch the last part, the questions that I was asking is, do you like your partner? Do you actually like your partner? Because if you do, why are you using sex as a weapon against them? Do you love your partner? Are you grateful for your partner? Do you trust yourself? When you're with your partner, do you trust your partner? Do you feel like you can be yourself with them? Can they be themselves with you? Or do you feel like you need to, I don't know, improve them or something? Um, so the person that I know that I use sex as a weapon uh, with, because I, I know I didn't like them, and I knew I didn't like them the, when I was with them, but... Um, that's a whole other story for another day, guys. So we'll talk about that another day. But uh, I did that and knowingly did that, consciously did it. Uh, for one, because it was for my safety. And for two, I knew not only did I not like them, I didn't trust them. I didn't trust myself with them. And I knew that the, uh, that the one way that I could probably be safe was to negotiate with sex. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't out of pleasure. It was out of survival. So if you've used sex to make sure that you will be okay, that you will survive, sometimes we do what we got to do. And sometimes we do what we got to do, and then we need to learn new ways of being and know that if you're in that kind of relationship, I hope you guys can get the energy of what I was talking about, that if you're in a relationship that is unkind, that you have some choices here. Choice number one is finding out if that's a relationship you'd actually like to be in. And if you would, then it's how do you grow from here? How do you learn to communicate? How do you learn to do different things so that you can have this relationship work for you, right? We want to have it work for you. And then if that doesn't, if that isn't the case and you're like, whoa, after evaluating this, I really think that was not my best choice. I want out. You need to have an exit strategy. So if you're in a relationship where you're using sex, sex against somebody or they're using it against you, there's probably some super deep resentments going on that could lead to some pretty big outbursts. Uh, so, you know, you might want to look at this from what's the safest, easiest way to end this relationship to, for both parties to be able to have different lives to move forward can be pretty deep and pretty hard. I've talked a lot about leaving relationships. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had my mom on and we talked about how to not let the abuser win. It was a great episode and you can go refer to that one to find out more about if you do need to get out, if you've been using sex as a weapon and you need to get out because using sex as a weapon no longer works for you, 
maybe now you're aware of it and you're like, oh, I've been doing this and my body actually doesn't want this sex, but I've been using it as a negotiation tool. I've been using it as, uh, as I feel coerced into it. I've been using it as, you know, uh, manipulation, coercion, negotiation, ugh, you name it, it's all a weapon. So I'm wondering if there is anybody out there who's listening who maybe you're ready to change that. And if you are ready to change that, please connect with me through melitzajelenik.com. You can always book a 15-minute freebie with me on the book now link and you can see if I'm a fit for you. We can kind of go through whatever's coming up for you on maybe why you would be using sex as a weapon and how you can change that if that's something you'd like to do. How to get into a relationship where you can have conversation with somebody without having it be creating issues, right? So we want to learn how to to have better communication skills. We don't have to use sex as a negotiation tool or as a weapon. We can have sex be something that can actually bring you and your partner together. You can have deeper love and deeper connection and work with it in a different way even, you know, having, having a much more rooted in, have your relationship rooted in something other than trauma, stress, you know, manipulation. So if you'd like to have a relationship you're not rooted in trauma, stress, and manipulation, what would that be like for you? Like, who could you be in a relationship where you don't have to manipulate for things that you'd like? Who would you be in a relationship when you don't have to negotiate either for sex or not for sex? So if you are also feeling like you, you know, you're like, wow, this is like some deep, heavy stuff but I know I'm doing this and I don't know really if I can stop because like, I think I like my partner, but I'm not sure. And I don't want to be alone. You know, you don't have to make a decision right now. You can contemplate these things, be with them. Just be with some of the questions that I asked you. Like, do you, it's really simple. Do you like your partner? Do you enjoy their company? Are you grateful for them? Are they grateful for you? And moving forward from that, asking some questions around, whether you enjoy their company, do you enjoy spending time with them, investing, do you like investing your time in them? Or do you feel like, you know, uh, such a waste of time hanging out with blah, blah, blah. So is it, is the investment worth it? Do you see like, a ret- you know, we can have ROIs in business, but we can have ROIs in relationship. Is there a return on investment for your time, for your energy, for all of the things that you are choosing are you seeing a return on your investment? So if you are, fantastic. If you're not and you'd like to start to see some of that, some of it comes from originally starting to have you, and I just got some fun comments in the chat room, like, oh, my brain likes that. The ROI on your relationship, there is, we have those. We need to invest and we need to see a return. So if you... If you are in a relationship and you're not seeing any return, then it's time to time to look at that. Apparently, I'm going to be writing a book about that. So that's mine, the ROI on relationships and sex. So that's book number two. Book number one is in the works, all about letting go of the trauma first and finding ways to have pleasure. Just going to take a bit of a breath because this is like some pretty deep, This is some pretty deep conversation we're getting into. I wanted to talk a little bit about also how there are times in our lives where we've been told to use sex as as a negotiation tool or that, you know, your hymen is incredibly valuable. So you'd want to wait to have sex until you're married because that very valuable hymen that apparently rips, but it doesn't actually, it's actually a super flexible body part that can just like stretch and move. And for the most part, when it's a, when it's a fairly average hymen, it's a commonly hymen stretch and move. Sometimes they're, they don't, they're not flexible. That's another story, but we've created sex as valuable a few ways. So able because then you own the person you've had sex with. That is even true historically going back 
to like um you know say ancient times roman times you know uh, there there is stuff in the bible that talks about that if if a man rapes a woman that he then has to look after her so now not only are you raped you now have to be you now have to be living with your rapist this is true in some countries still to this day that if you've been raped then your rapist is obligated to look after you so weird weaponry there and some of this stuff around using sex as a weapon is absolutely rooted in certain religious beliefs where we negotiate for sex as if it's like something that mm, i don't know how to explain it other than it's like sex has been created as something which i agree sex is incredibly powerful but it doesn't need to be used as a manipulation tool you only get sex if you marry me that's like a negotiation tool right if you know if you've raped somebody then you have to marry them that's another weird sex weapon thing um that's not sex that's rape which is different but some people think it's the same so non-consensual sex as a way to own a person and manipulate getting what you want from that and then we have a whole slew of other ways that sex has been used in um <laughs> yes that's true meatloaf did sing about that you're right I won't sing the song, but I hear you. So there, there is, oh, there, there are so many different um, religions in the world who, who espouse the idea that sex is, um, sex can and should be used almost like a weapon in relationships, that it's a negotiation tool and or that one partner should succumb to the other one because they're obligated how is obligation good to me that's also a weapon obligation obligation sex is probably so if i had to put a scale on it like non-consent comes here and then obligation sex is just slightly better than that coercion and obligation sex are barely better than you know violence to me and non-consent um, I say that from my own personal experience, but you can evaluate that for yourself. So if we didn't have to use sex as a weapon and we could use sex as a communication tool, as a connection tool, as a tool to share and love and explore, oh, wouldn't that just create some lightness in the air? Because man, there's some heaviness in the air right now on this sex as a weapon because, ugh, there are millions of people using it as a weapon right now in various different ways. So many different ways that it's been used as weapons to harm people. We just really simplify it down to have you used it to harm people emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, then it's been used as a weapon. Have you had it used against you spiritually, emotionally, physically, you know, or uh, psychically or whatever we want to call it? big so if you have then sex has been used as a weapon against you and if you happen to have a lover that you're with that you know you realize that hey maybe we've done that now's a great time for forgiveness go get out your hopo, ho opo ono onos go listen to the hawaiian forgiveness prayer spend some time listening to that with your lover and begin to start to forgive and find a new way to connect do some hugs use last week's show on energetic orgasms on connecting so that you can have a new way to connect that doesn't require all of this weaponry thank you for listening to the pleasure zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. the pleasure zone returns next monday at 8 p.m eastern 7 p.m central 6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. 
The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.